God has been so good to me. And he gave me one of the most beautiful women, I guess, on the planet. So Kathy, stand up. This is my wife of 53 years. Thank you. And to live with me was no easy thing. She said, she said the first five years was hell and I created it all. But she prayed me in, her and my mother, which I didn't want to do any of this stuff. But God was so good and gracious. And I've learned something about a mother or a really good wife. They just don't give up. And as much sin as I did, I mean, good, you have no idea. And I ain't gonna tell you neither. The guy said, I don't mind you telling them stories about them women, but don't you be smiling. <laughs> said, okay, you know. How many people brought your Bibles or your iPads? Would you go with me to the book of Acts, chapter 12? Now, as you're turning to the book of Acts, I want everybody to listen to me now. You know, we really razz each other a lot, me and Kenneth and... And we, we, Brother Copeland, I, you know, when I'm in front of people calling Brother Copeland, when we, we, we buy ourselves, it's Kenneth and Jess, Jerry, we, but I just have to say it. They never had the body I had. <laughs> I was a chiseled piece of man candy. <laughs> and I want to show you what I looked like, and I was 17, when Kathy met me. I sat at the swimming pool, and if you notice by my stung, that's serratus, which means the skin is right up against the muscle in the Boy, if I'd have turned you to seen the six pack, Jerry Savelle has never looked like that. <laughs> <laughs> so Kathy, in my, uh, my workout room, she's, she wants to put a picture uh, before and then whip my shirt off now, after. <laughs> You can take it off. You can take it off. <laughs> I had a preacher and his wife came and she was looking at that. She said, my God, look at your arm. And she's just really looking at it. She said, my God, but just you was good. I said, yeah. And she was just caught, starting to enjoy it too much. <laughs> I could tell her husband get a little irritated. You know, I said, well, let's go <laughs> let me show you the rest of the house. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's when Kathy saw me. She went. She said, he's a legend in his own mind. (laughs) Acts chapter 12. I'm reading out of the King James Version. I'm going to read a little scripture today. And what I'm going to finish, and I'm going to put something in you that you're not going to forget. You're going to be saying it tonight, tomorrow. And I'm going to give you the title of it in just a minute. Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Now, about that time, Herod... The king stretched forth his hand to vex, certain, to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. This was a mean man. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, that's the church of that day, hmm. he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread or Easter, whatever you want to call it. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quatrains of soldiers. That was four squads of soldiers, four apiece. That's 16 soldiers watching Peter. To keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Would you underline that if you, if you have a, a, your Bible or whatever, how you do that with your iPad. When Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. This boy was locked down. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. And a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, Arise, up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hand. Now, if you knew you were going to be killed the next morning, would you be sleeping? (laughs) 
Would you be saying, oh, Lord, or would you be saying, oh, Jesus, do something. They're going to kill me tomorrow. Oh, God. Peter is sleeping. Mm, mm. Verse 8, an angel said unto him, gird thyself up and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out following him, wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. He thought he was dreaming or open vision. He didn't know he was sleeping. Verse 10, when they were past the first and the second ward, they got, you got to understand when chains fall off, they make a lot of noise. Bam, they hit. But these boys are sound asleep too. All these people that are trying to protect him for Herod. Verse 10, when they were past the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate that leaded into the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street and fought with, this is very important, the angel departed from him. Underline that. Come on, come back to that in a minute. The angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod. And from all the expectation, of the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, who was certainly was Mark, who, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, someone knocking on the door, somebody ringing the bell, someone knocking on the door, somebody ringing the bell. Verse 15, they said, uh, verse 14, uh, verse 13, and Peter knocked at the door of the gate. A, dam a damsel na came to hearken him named Rhoda. She was a Gentile that they liked. They brought her there. Rhoda meant actually Rose was her name. When she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. They said unto her, thou art mad. Now, why have they been praying all night for God to deliver Peter? Was there anybody praying in faith? <laughs> Not one. Not one. He has a harder time getting in the house than he is getting out of jail. <laughs> Verse 14, when, when, when she knew Peter's voice, she opened out the gate for gladness, but ran in and told her how Peter stood before the gate. They said unto her, thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, it's his angel. My God, these are the most unbelieving people you ever saw in your life. <laughs> but Peter continued knocking. Someone knocking on the door. Somebody ringing the bell. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. So that tells you they wouldn't believe it. But he beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, they got all excited. Shut up, man, I just got out of jail. But he beckoned unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. Notice that. How did the Lord brought him out of the prison? The Lord did not bring him to the house. Oh. I'm getting ahead of myself right here. Got him out of prison, but didn't get him to the house. Verse 17, but he beckoned to them with the hand to hold their peace, declared to them how the Lord had brought to him out of prison. And he said, go show these things unto James the less. How'd you like to have a name like that? When you were to have James the more? Then James the less, for God's sake. And to the, how about the other Mary? <laughs> Kathy got mad at a church one time. We walked in, she, they said, hello, Sister Jesse. Oh, God. She said, my name is not Jesse. And you can tell me Kathy's mad because she says a whole name. Her name is Catherine Marie Duplantis. My name is Catherine. And I said, oh, someone knocking on the door. <laughs> Somebody ringing the bell. But he beckoned unto them that with, with the hand to hold the peace and declared unto them how the Lord brought him out of prison. And he said, go show these things unto James the less and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. He had to get out of there. Watch this. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. What was to become of Peter? When Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. So 16 men died. Hmm. 
And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. And you keep on reading and Herod, because he sowed death, he received death. And he died. And I, I like what he said. And Peter kept knocking. Someone knocking on the door. Somebody ringing the bell. Do you hear somebody knocking? These people have an all night prayer meetings and nobody believed them. Astonished that they see what they prayed come to pass. But a little Gentile girl named Rose said, I'm telling you, he's out there. Shut up, girl. You don't know what you're talking about. It's his angel. Now watch this. The angel knocked everything out of Peter's way. And then he departed. You see, people think God's going to bring you to the house. He ain't bringing you to the house. He's going to get you out of the problem. Now it's your time for you to walk and go do what God's called you to do. You see, everybody's waiting. Well, you know, when the Lord get ready, he been ready. You see, the angel departed. And he said, Peter, you better get out of there because Peter could have got caught and thrown back in jail. The angel did his job. God did his job and then he left. And so many people waiting for God to complete it. He has completed. He got you out the problem. Now you walk by faith and not by sight. That's what, uh, uh, you know, with, uh, with, with our brothers preaching about the 4D. Now, was you going to have to believe something that's unbelievable, impossible, simply because it's doable. Now, I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. Faith keepers. Everybody say faith keepers. Faith keepers never put faith in the wrong place. Faith keepers never put faith in the wrong place. You get what you want because you demand it from life and life sends it to you. The reason why I have what I say, because I demand it. I don't ask for it. I demand and command Satan to get away from me. I don't say, would you please go? See, everybody's waiting for God to rebuke the devil. He ain't going to rebuke the devil. That's your job. He saved you from the devil and then he departed. Now you do your job. You see what I'm saying? Let me say it again. Faith keepers never put faith in the wrong place. You get what you want because you demand it from life and life sends it to you. So when I sow a seed, I don't come, I don't add, oh gee, I hope so. I demand and, and command, not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold. Now you can do what you want to do. You can criticize me till you're blue in the face, but I tell you, I have the hundredfold. It's on my life. It, it flows. I'm not bragging about it. It's just simply the truth. You see what I'm saying? And I know I say stories that seem almost impossible. But now you look at me now, but you look at that picture. <laughs> I, said, I, told, I told Peter, that's what Kathy lusted after. <laughs> and she said, and boy, I mean, girls would just want to touch, touch me. And they said, can we touch your body? I said, help yourself. <laughs> I was a heathen. I didn't care about nothing. I'm not smiling, Kathy. I'm not smiling at all. <laughs> Just want everybody to know that. Because if I'm not here tomorrow, you know why. Someone knocked on the door. <laughs> faith keepers never put, your, never put their faith in the wrong place. You get what you want because you demand it from life and life sends it. So I demand that. I command that. See, when you continue to knock, faith tells you to never expect disappointment. See, the church was expecting disappointment. They wasn't expecting him to show up. That's why Rhoda didn't open up the door. They said, girl, 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 don't be stupid. He's in jail. He can't get out of jail, but you forgot about the God that loves you. Now, this is being played at our home church at Covenant Church on our Wednesday night service. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? Now, when you understand what I'm saying here, in other words, 99% of all decisions, Dan, that I make, I make 99% of all decisions, me and Kathy, of Jesse the Planet's ministries. Because see, God tells, he said, Jesse, I'm not going to be tying your shoes for you all your life. Make a decision and I'll back it. Yeah. See, and I always thought that God would take me to the house. He ain't going to take me to the house. What he wants me to do, I'll get you out of the rough places. Now you walk where you want to go. And if you're not satisfied right there, then you find the place you want to be. Come on. And I'll never leave you or forsake you. So in essence, don't get mad at me. I'm leading God instead of God leading me. Oh, I lost a few of you right there. You see, that's not arrogant. No, no. That way he's, he got me out of the bind. Now do this. Gave me a jet. Now support that jet. Now, you know, some people don't believe in tithing. What's your problem? Well, it's under the law. Well, you know, they got that from Malachi 3.8. 
And that was the preachers that <laughs> Malachi was talking about. The preachers, you know, he said, will a man rob God? Uh, let me answer that question. Yes, rob him in a second. How have you robbed me? In tithe and offering. Oh, oh, what, what did you say? In tithe and offering. Well, no, well, what did you say? In tithe and offering. I don't, you don't have to tithe because it's under the law. But wait a minute. It said offerings too. It says tithe and offerings. So why are you giving offerings? That's under the law. You said Malachi 3, 10 is under the law, right? It's not Malachi 3, 8 to 10. Tithe, that's under, well, wait, it says tithe and offerings. So there's no such thing as grace offerings. Well, I lost a few of you right there. Wait a minute. It said tithe and offerings. It didn't just say tithe. I'm not being critical of anybody. Don't misunderstand. I'm just saying is anytime somebody says you don't want to stop giving, something wrong with that. Because the minute you stop sowing, you start decaying. Your legacy is the children that are birthed to you. Think about that for a minute. He said tithe and offering. No, no, you know, no, no, no. Because if it's under the law, so is the offering. So we should never have offering. Just forget it. Yo mama ain't gonna do that. It's not on, yeah, we, ladies and gentlemen, we understand the law. The law is called the curse. I understand because people couldn't keep it, but it was pure and perfect. And that's why they couldn't keep it. They first had to get born again to keep it. But when God tore that curtain, Oh, I love that. And I preached a sermon in the curtain tour. I said that the other day. Oh, God. All of a sudden, light exploded into the holies of holies. All the Jews forgot about the earthquake, the rocks and everything. And they said, good God, that's the Ark of the Covenant. And what is Jesus? The light of the world. Amen. The light came out. What well, the Bible says that in the book of Isaiah. In the, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne. Watch this high and lifted up, and his train, uh-oh, filled the temple, which was telling you that God was prophesying that I'm coming out of the holies of holies. I'm going to get into the holy place. I'm going to get past the holy place. I'm going to get into everything. that the, Everything you see, you'll be able to touch me. And like I said earlier, if Judas would have repented, he could have walked in there. Now, let me tell you something about Judaism before you get all have a flaming fit. After those boys got born again, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, Peter, James, and John, they were still devout Jews. They were devout Jews, but they said, we have a better covenant. Not that the old covenant was bad, it's just a better covenant. You don't need this one man coming in there because this terrible God, you can't touch him. Now God opens up and says, come to me, all you that are uh, heavy laden, and I will get, you know, heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Enter into the rest. Here's some problem with most people. They're waiting for the rest to enter into them. That's not going to happen. The angel departed. Now you enter into the rest and you complete your destiny and reach your destination. So when you continue to knock, faith tells you to never expect disappointment. Why? Someone knocking on the door. Somebody ringing the bell, which means something is happening. Write this down. You will never remove a mountain standing still and looking at it. You got to speak to that thing. You got to say to that mountain. It didn't say climb the mountain. The church world has taught us to be mountain climbers and not mountain dissolvers. See, that, that's the problem. You spend your whole Christian life climbing a mountain when you never had to climb it at all. When all you had to do is speak to the mountain. So let me say it again. You will never remove a mountain standing still and looking at it. You must speak to it. So when you understand that, that's God's word, see. So I realized something. God said, I'm going to give you a plane. I said, okay, give me a plane. Now watch this. And he gave me that first plane. I've owned four jets, not at one time. That's what uh, Good Morning America was trying to tell you. And my, and my, my lawyers got a hundred million off of that and I canceled it. Now, if you want to see lawyers cry, <laughs> they said, you'll get 60 million and we'll get 40 million. We got them. They took uh, a private property. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, intellectual property. They shouldn't have done that. And, I, and the Lord said, kill that thing. I said, okay. They said, no, no, they're going to appeal. It don't make no difference how they appeal. It don't make no difference. We got them. Yes. But they're just looking about the money. 
And, and I understand, I have no problem with a lawyer making money or anybody making money. It's not the issue. But the, I said, Lord, how do you want me to handle this? He said, you'll kill it with joy. And that's been the best thing that's ever happened in my ministry. Now people know me all over the world because of a jet. I was the number one story in Kazakhstan. I don't even know where that's at. <laughs> and I've walked through places uh, and I said, that's that man that owns all them jets. You know, they said I had a fleet. Maybe I should have believed them. <laughs> they, they were believing for it. You will never remove a mountain standing still and looking at it. So when I purchased the jet, God got me the, got me the jet, got me out. Now he said, now, whatever the jet needs, handle it. So he didn't come with me to the mechanic. That's my job. Someone knocking on the door. Yeah, he's going to get you out, but you expect for him to walk with you. No, 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 no. Now it's time for you to do your part. See what I'm saying? And you'll find out all through the scripture where the angels departed and people say, well, where are you going? We're not finished yet. As far as I'm concerned, I'm finished. Now you finished the job. You see, write this down. You, the ministry of God gives the harvest, but the ministry of man brings it home. Write it down. The ministry of God gives the harvest, but the ministry of man brings it home. See, Jesus turned the water into wine, right? But he didn't go fetch the water. He didn't go get a bucket of water, put his hand in and turn it into wine. See, no, he turned the water into wine. It was up to them to go get the water and bring it to him. Yeah. Let me say it again. The ministry of God gives the harvest, but the ministry of man must bring it home. So, so people can see what you believe in God for. Amen. And you say, how'd you get that? Well, the Lord opened the doors for me, but he didn't go into the house. Now you finish your destiny and complete your destination. You see what I'm saying? Most people want God to all of us lay down, drop, send an angel, drop a grape in our mouth and everything going to be fine. No, it don't work that way. Now, let me say, I'm going to go back to the tithe. In there. I love the tithe. Why? Not because of Malachi 310, because of Malachi 311. He rebukes the devourer for my sake. One time I went to rebuke the devil and the Lord said, what you doing? I said, I'm rebuking the devil. He said, that's not your job. You're a tither. That's my job. Back up. I'll rebuke him. Isn't that amazing? You see, I was expecting, well, you know, God, you got to come with me inside the house. You got, no, 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 no. That's my job to walk by faith and not by sight. He's the one that gives me the faith. Now take it, what you're going to do with it. That's a faith keeper. See, doing stuff like that. The ministry of God gives the harvest, but the ministry of man must bring it home. Well, how do we do those things? Now I know I'm going fast. I'll go over it in a minute. You must gather the forces necessary to accomplish your desires. Well, how do you do that? Determination and prayer will get it done. See, when you determine to do something, no one can stop you. You must gather the forces necessary to accomplish your desires. Determination and prayer will get it done. I made up my mind that at Armstrong International Airport, when I first went out there, I bought my first aircraft. Me and Brother Copeland was with me. In November of 1994, and Mr. Firestone said, I tried to give him something to hold the plane. Can I give you $25,000 to hold the plane? Is your word your bond? See, he wanted me to walk the rest of the way. I said, yes, sir. He said, take the plane off the market. The plane belongs to the river. And now I'm not thinking he's going to give me $250,000 off the price. It's still 900 grand. And then my God, he turns around and said, that costs 250000 Take the price off of that one. Now I thought, Jesus, we had six fifty here. Glory to God. And then Brother Coleman said, well, I ain't, I'm getting involved in this myself. And gave $100,000. So that plane cost me $550,000, which was a steal and a blessing of the Lord. And I flew it in nine years. And then Keith Moore flew it. Remember that? i never forget when Keith got it. He says, I got, and Keith got a little high voice. I got a jet. <laughs> I got a jet. Well, he knows how to fly a jet. I don't know how to fly no jet. You know, I, I, like I said, I told Brother Coleman, I, I think I can land that plane. He said, J that's crashing. You, you, don't, you, you don't think you can land a plane. You better land the plane. You must gather the forces necessary to accomplish your desires. So when I built Jesse the Planet's Ministries, I already knew what I was going to do, when I was going to do it, where I was going to do it, and how I was going to do it. 
Now, God said, you will build it for under $7 million. This is years ago now. Under $7 million. And my contractor and it was in business 40 years. And I, what's the name of the guy there? The one that did the plans. The architect. He said, you will not do this for any less than 10, 12, maybe. I said, we'll do it for under $7 million. We'll come under budget. He said, that can't be. But see, I had determined what the Lord said. Now, they were, knew a lot more than me, but they didn't know the God I knew. See, let me say it again. You must gather the forces necessary to accomplish your desire. So I began to tell them what was going to happen. They said, well, that just can't be. And we built that whole facility. If you ever come, it's a beautiful place for $6,746,000. Today, it's worth $27 million. Now, if I build a dog house, the dog going to get wet. You understand? I, I, I'm not a builder. Kathy can build things. You give Kathy a butter knife, she can take this whole convention center down with a butter knife. <laughs> I mean, Kathy can fix some stuff, man. I mean, she can fix some stuff. I can't fix nothing. I mean, I try, I'm not mechanical. One time I thought I fixed the toilet, but when I turned on the switch, the light switch, the toilet flushed. So I was bragging how good it was. She sent a car for, while I was out of town. She got somebody coming in and fixed that thing. I was bragging. She never told me nothing until years later. She said, you didn't fix that. You destroyed the thing. I was trying to tell Brother Copeland how to fix them wires and eat that. Yeah. I said, you know, Brother Copeland, if you just walk away, maybe you can get it. Well, why don't you do that? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> then he cursed my boots. And they flapped off. And I threw them away. And he found them in the garbage. You, prophets find things. <laughs> Had them fixed and shipped them to New Orleans. And he said, it's the ugliest boots he ever seen. They were on a Schwarzenegger boots. I'm back. I put them boots on, my Lord, just wore them out. But uh, he fixed them. See, there's always somebody that can fix something. See, you just got to find them, the faith keepers. So you must gather the forces necessary to accomplish your desires. Determination and prayer will get it done. You see, you, you have to understand something. Faith keepers need God for the rescue. Write that down. Faith keepers need God for the rescue. But for the rescue, God needs you. See, you got to do your part. Faith keepers need God for the rescue. That's Peter. But watch this. To get to the house, God, now God needs Peter. So let me say it again. Faith keepers need God for the rescue. But for the rescue, God needs you. So I've had God tell me this. Are you going to complete this? I've done my part. Are you going to do this? I said, I'm yours to command. He said, then let's go. And I've learned to do those things, you know, because I realized, I know who, who don't want God to just do it all? You know, it, it'd be just nice. But see, the angel will depart. And you'd like the angel to kind of get you to the house. I'll give you, the, I have been translated. I can prove that. That I can prove. Now, uh, you have to believe that I went to heaven and uh, Brother Dad Hagen told me, he said, buddy, he said, I know that's true. And Brother Hagen was pretty conscious of spiritual thing. And, uh, and, and uh, I mean, he said, they put goosebumps, big as acorns on my, on my skin. And because I went there, I saw that, but I never forget when God translated me, I was, I was in actually Monroe, Louisiana. And I had told a man and his daughter was sick that I would stop by in Lafayette, Louisiana to pray for his daughter. Remember Ken was his name. And, and I said, okay, well, I was at sunny day contractors when I left and I left at uh, 11 o'clock. Actually, five after 11. Now, to drive from Monroe, Louisiana to um, uh, Lafayette, you're looking at hmm, two hours, two and a half, maybe. Easy. Well, I got my car. I'm driving. And they, we have what we call Vidox. That's an overpass. They call it a Vidox. So I was coming out of Monroe, Monroe, and I was going up on the Vidox or the overpass to going over to, uh, to Lafayette, which is two and a half hours away. And my car filled up with smoke. I thought the car was on fire. I thought, my God, man. I mean, it just came out, the vents came out from under the bottom of the dashboard. And I went, oh, like that. And then also I just got hit with the Holy Ghost. I found my hands lifted up, smoke. I couldn't see nothing. Oh, but I just praying in the Holy Ghost. And then my mind said, put your hands on the wheel, fool. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I like this. Put your hands on the wheel, fool. I mean, and I thought, my God, man. And when I opened my eyes, I was on the Evangeline Thruway in Lafayette, Louisiana. This is impossible. You can't do it with a jet. 
and I had my hands on the wheel and the smoke dissipated. And I put this in Close Encounters of the God Kind of the Book. To make a long story short, I, I, I pulled over. I was, confi- I, I have to use the word confused, but I, I, I was like, Peter, I don't, was I dreaming? What, what happened? So I called Sonny Day, who was, the, he, he's Sonny Day contract. I said, hey, Sonny, this is Jesse. He said, hey, man, you okay? You broke down? I said, I'm in Lafayette. He said, you what? I said, I'm in Lafayette, Louisiana. I'm on the Evangeline Thruway in Lafayette right now. He said, man, you made good time. <laughs> I said, Sonny, I said, remember this phone call, but ain't nobody gonna believe this. I, and it dawned on me, wait a minute. If this happened the way I think it happened, then I didn't burn no gas. <laughs> so man, I had cut the car off. You had to get on a pay phone. You see, you didn't have cell phones and all this. And I turned the, um, um, the, the switch and the gas then went, mm. I thought, my God, he said, are you going to come to the hospital? And I was about ready. And the Lord said, you don't have to go. I got to this foot of mine hurting a little bit. Uh, you don't have to go. I said, uh, okay. I said, I'm going to call Ken. So I called the hospital there. And when he answered the phone, they screaming in the hospital room. We losing her. We losing her. Her temperature was at 107 cooking her. She was in convulsions, this little girl. She was about eight years old. And Ken said, my daughter's dying. My daughter's dying. I said, Ken, Ken. I had to holler at him. What? I said, put your hand on your daughter. What? And the doctor said, we're losing her. I could hear him. I said, put your hand on your daughter. You need to come. Ken, put your hand on your daughter. He, and he did. And I went, you devil from hell. I bind you in Jesus. This is outside the little convenience store. I'm screaming. <laughs> But when you just been translated, you scream, baby. <laughs> and I heard, oh! And I, he busts out crying. And the little girl stopped, opened her eyes. She said, Mama, I'm hungry. The doctors freaked out. 107 down to 98.6, gone. She is full grown woman. And I met Ken. Wait, wait, wait. We went to St. Martin's. Well, my, well, Meredith, my granddaughter, goes to school. This is when she was younger. And I said, Ken, how you doing? He said, you know the daughter you prayed for? Yeah, he said, this is my granddaughter. She goes to this school here. We went on Grandparents Day and all that kind of stuff. And it was just such a blessing. I said, you remember that, Ken? He said, my God. He said, I wanted you to come. You see, but the angel already departed. All I had to do was pray. Now, you know what I did? I prayed for him. I said, thank you, Jesus. And I drove out of Lafayette and pulled over. I could build a monument there. I know exactly the grass. And I cut the engine off. I said, do it again. (laughs) Do it again, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Someone knocking on the door. Somebody (laughs) ringing the bell. Come on, Jesus, do it again. And I went, and I'm still in the same place. (laughs) I had another hour and a half, almost two hours more to drive because I was going to Kathy's hometown, Homer. I said, Jesus, he said, you didn't need to pray for it. I did what I was supposed to do. Now, start the car and drive home. <laughs> so that's what Peter was doing. He's just waiting for the angel just to bring him to the house. No, now I got you out of jail. Now walk. That's what faith keepers do. So it's amazing. You will get us sometimes some impossible situations. And you will think, oh, well, God's going to take me all the way. No, he's going to take you out of the trouble. Now you do the walking yourself. So you must gather the forces necessary to accomplish your desires. Determination and prayer will get it done. So I made up my mind that we would do it for uh, $7 million on building the building. And we did it for $6,746,000. I mean, I know it down to the T. And it was just amazing because I'm a figures person. You know, I, 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 know, I, know, I don't mean this private. I know money. I know how to handle those kind of things. I know business. I know how to do those things. I learned it from Jesus. I'm about my father's business. He's 12. Well, I started a little later than Jesus. You know what I mean? I was working at 12 years old full time, even though I was going to school. You can't do that today because of child labor laws. But my dad just made that happen. I mean, it's just the way it was. And, you know, and I, I'm not a good fisherman. I'm not a good hunter. Uh, uh, and that's why, you know, Brother Copeland, they laugh when I dropped motorcycle. I was raised on the streets. Now, you see, I mean, I mean, I didn't know nothing about fishing and hunting. I've been hunting with him and all that kind of stuff. And man, this deer and elk said, Jesse's here. Don't move. He's he going to miss us. <laughs> I mean, they're standing, but from me to Keith. 
You ain't got to move. He can't hit the side of a barn. And the reason why, because I get buck fever. My heart's doing And John Copeland said, kill it, kill it, but just shoot the gun. <laughs> now them, oh yeah, them, bam, bam, man, they put them down. Now the difference between me and them, let them take them to the city of New Orleans. And when the Cosa Nostra come, and they see what happened with these boys, when they slap a few people and put a couple of guns in people's mouth, <laughs> Not me. Shoot the boy. It's a different way of living. You see what I'm saying? Now, and so I, now I, I ain't telling you everything I did because the Lord not only washed my sin away, he expunged my record. Like it never, ever existed. So let me go over this real quick. Faith keepers never put faith in the wrong place. You get what you want because you demand it from life and life sends it to you. Then I told you, when you continue to knock, someone knocking on the door. Faith tells you to never expect disappointment. So I never expect disappointment. But Jesse, have you ever, God's ever told you no? No. Why, why, why would he do that? That's expecting disappointment. Well, now who do you think you are? Well, everything Keith Moore's been preaching about. I'm free. Well, if you're free, you ain't got no trouble, right? Home the Son is set free, free indeed, right? I mean, come on, is that true? Fourth dimension. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, it take a long time for my brother to get out of this thing. I do this all the time at this church too. People just love it. He said, boy, you can, you can mimic him. I said, oh yeah. Why? Well, because I love him and I love his family and I've been there so many years. I mean, when I go to, when I go to uh, our, our brother's church, they think I'm a brother. I mean, I can act like a black man. I can preach. I can hoop it. And the Lord said, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Lord, Lord. Can nobody do me like that? Oh, man. You know, just go at it, son. Well, you become all things to all people. You will never remove a mountain standing still and looking at it. You're never going to build buildings and just looking at it. You got to do something. Yeah, but I want God to do it. He did. He gave me the faith. Now go. Then he just departed. Now go do your thing. I love that point. The ministry of God gives the harvest, but the ministry of man must bring it home. Jesus turned the water into wine, but he didn't go fetch the water. Amen. Do you see my point? In other words, we are, I love what our brother said. He said that miracles leave no traces, but it don't have to have a trace if it's a living, breathing miracle. Then I told you, you must gather the forces necessary to accomplish your desires. Determination and prayer will get it done. Now, I, I want you to write this down. Faith keepers need God for the rescue, but for the rescue, God needs you. I said that to you. See, I mean, he'll get, he will rescue you. Now, Peter, go do the work that I've called you to do. And he didn't stay at that place very long because everybody in that church was not believing. He got out of there and went to another place. Think about that. How many times I've had people say, my brother Jesse, you know, th this is so impossible. I said, you, just, you should be shouting because God don't work in the realm of possibility. That's your job. He only works in the realm of impossibility. So I'm going to tell people, well, how much money are you believing for? They do just enough to make sure that, you know, it don't look too bad if God doesn't bring it fast. And when I tell business people, vice presidents of banks and uh, uh, Wall Street gurus, and you know, I understand Wall Street. Dan's a good Wall Street man. I mean, he brought me on Wall Street and all that kind of stuff, many, me and Jerry many years ago in the pits. I don't think they do that anymore. I think they work, they trade some other kind of way of doing that stuff. But I mean, I'll never forget those things. And I observed things. I, I was watching, you see. Now, I know how to use other people's money. You can hear people say all the time, use other, you, don't use your money, use other people's money. I mean, I know how to do that. But when you got so much, Why can't, why can't you use yours? You've heard me say it before. I never take no from a person who can't say yes. Huh. Uh -uh. I, I, I don't do that. When I do business, I, I, I told you this story before I tell you real quick. I went to New York and I was at the Four, Se the four Seasons. Yeah. 
and, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Ritz Carlton, whatever you call it. So they start charging my card at three o'clock. Well, I got that at 5.30, and, and, you know, because of, you know, traffic and stuff. New York people don't know how to drive in rain. They freak out. <sighs> and they cuss you while you were driving. <laughs> Place needs help, boy. <laughs> so I said, ma'am, I'm just in plans. I want to check in my room. She said, okay. And she looked, she said, I'm sorry, sir. Your room is not ready. But before I could say anything, she said, we'll take your bags. We'll put them in the little room right here and we'll call you when it's ready. I said, but my money's ready. She said, excuse me. I said, my money's ready. You've been charging me since three o'clock. She said, uh, yes, sir. I said, well, then I, I want my room. I said, I got to clean up. I got a meeting to do tonight. I got some. Th-. She said, well, 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 the maids hadn't checked it. I said, ma'am, can you say yes? She said, what? I said, you can't say yes. You just say in the, uh, whatever the, the thing is that you say. And I looked at her, I said, do you have people, are you related to people in Bethlehem? <laughs> I said, cause Jesus couldn't get in his room neither. been born in a stable. He'd have been born in a hotel room. He's trying to get me in. I said, ma'am, get me somebody higher. And the president of Ritz Carlton happened to be in the hotel. That day. He comes walking in. He said, do we have a problem? I said, no. I said, can you say yes? He said, excuse me. I said, you know, I'm a president of a corporation myself. Presidents ought to know how to talk to presidents, right? Oh, uh, yes, sir. I said, can you say yes? He said, yes. I said, say it again. Yes. I said, they say I can't get in my room. He said, well, look, look. And he goes, well, you know, the maids hadn't called in yet. I said, well, what are you doing right now? He said, well, I'm talking to you. I said, well, we can talk while we walk, can't we? He said, yes, we can. I said, let's go see if the room's ready. He goes, I said, can you say yes? He said, yes. I said, me too. Yes. <laughs> Boom, the lady don't know what to do. Me and the president of the risk call is walking down the hall. And guess what? The room was ready. The girl hadn't punched it in yet. He said, there, the room is ready. I said, you see that when you talk to presidents, you make things happen. He said, I'll never forget what you said. Never take no from a person who can't say yes. See, uh-uh. you can say what you want. I don't care how much power they got. I don't care. You just, if you find the right person, they have the ability. You got to just get a little higher. Well, my God, mine, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. That's as high as you can get. And let me tell you something about the father. He will say yes. See, stone walls do not a prison make, nor iron bars a cage. Don't get into an unexpected mood. See, even though he was locked up in that prison, there's no way he's going to get out of that. I don't care how bad it seems. You don't get in an unexpected mood. I totally made up my mind that I would build that ministry debt free and under budget. Amen. Yeah, but you can't do that. But the Bible said I can do all things. Yes. Well, how do you know that? Someone knocking on the door. Somebody ringing a bell. What do you, I mean, do, just do your part. He, he's not asking you to do God's part. Yeah, that's right. Just do your part. Yeah. Kathy comes up to me all the time. You know, in fact, they all, uh, they call me the golden goose. When I'm not around, they say, don't kill the golden goose. One lady got mad about it, sent me a beautiful painting of a golden eagle. She said, you're not a goose, you're a golden eagle. I said, so I put it in the bathroom in, my, in, my, in the blue suite of my house. So I look at it, I said, well, everybody else called me a golden goose at the office, but I'm a golden eagle. I was just having fun, you know. But see, I have directors and they get in there and they talk to Kathy. She's CEO, I'm C, uh, chief executive officer, she's chief operating officer. Make a long story short. They say, well, now nah, listen, we got to go in there and present this to Jesse. They setting me up <laughs> because see, I have the ability to say yes. Yeah. Kathy has the ability to say yes to a certain degree. My director's to a certain degree because I told her, I said, let me tell you something. If these checks bounce, they're not coming to the directors. That's right. They're not coming to you, Kathy. They're not coming to all their supervisors. They're coming to my office. They're coming to that desk because I make, well, the Lord does, but through me, makes that check good. So I come walking in and they were having a meeting and I'm listening, standing just like this. And they, I never thought that there were things would be going on in my ministry that I wouldn't know about, that it got big enough that I, I said, Kathy, how come I don't know about that? You know what she said? She said, that's below your pay grade. <laughs> 
I said, well, you know, that's right. I don't need, that's what I hired y'all for. Well, do whatever you need to do. Well, I went back two weeks later and now they're hitting, they're going into the multi-million dollar project stuff and they set me up, see? So I, I walked in and I listened and boy, they're talking about this. And I, I said, Kathy, that's above your pay grade. <laughs> that comes to my office. And we were about ready to go in. I said, I don't want Bill O'Reilly. I don't want to spend. <laughs> Just tell me what it costs and you better make sure you're right because I will not forget that figure. So here come my finance director and all that. They say, don't tell him a figure because he will not forget it. Like one of my directors told me, you know, we could do a, a different thing on our magazine. My magazine costs $3 million a year. That's just to print the thing. Now, everybody said, why are you printing that? When well, most people can do it digital. You know, it's easy, it's cheaper, you know. I said, well, Kathy likes an iPad, I like a book. Yeah. Same thing, you know, just have what you like. Now watch this, so, all right, you know, so I'm just thinking, well, you know, whatever they want to do, you know? So I, I, I'm just looking and they're doing a magazine, doing all the kind of stuff and, uh, and, and I, 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 I got to produce this because I know they're going to come to me. So here they come. I said, don't give me no spin, tell me that. He said, you know what? If we change our publishing and change paper, we can save, what is it, $200,000, $150,000, $200,000. I said, do you believe that? He said, and my director said, yes, I, I certainly do. I said, when will I have that figure? When will we have it? He said, well, by November. I said, you like your job? I said, come November. I want to see the $200,000 savings. He goes, uh, uh, I said, do you believe what you say? He said, yes, I do. I said, then I will not speak another word to you till November. Come November 1st, guess where I was? I walked into his desk. I said, where's my 200 grand? He goes, right here. I said, you get a raise. <laughs> See, now they had to work hard to do it. He said, well, I was about ready to call you and say, have the Lord pray for us. You know, I said, he's already prayed. That's what Lester Summerall told me one time. Called me, he said, just the plans, I'm Lester Summerall. I want you to come preach my convention. And like a stupid thing, I said, you know, I said, well, what, bro, Brother Summerall, I said, I, I'll pray about it. He said, I already prayed. <laughs> I said, what? Well, I already prayed. Why are you going to pray about it? You think I call you out praying? I said, well, no. He said, I already prayed. Now, when you coming? <laughs> I said, well, Brother Summerall, uh, I can't do it this year. But well, the Lord didn't tell me when you were coming. He just told me you were coming. Give me a date. And you don't need to pray about it because I already prayed. <laughs> I said, this date. He said, done. Hung the phone up. That's it. He wanted, God spoke to him to do it. God did his part and it was my job to do my part. <laughs> See, a good habit will give you continuance for grace and produce action for success. See, I'm a success going somewhere to succeed. You do what you want to do. I don't care about the economy. I don't care about what they're doing. I occupy till he comes. Supposing they take all your money. Well, see, you just got to get pretty strong. And when you know in whom you have believed and you're persuaded. Yeah. I mean, I had my own, we don't have, par we don't have counties, we have parishes. We're going to do this and do that. I said, you want to sue me? I said, I promise all of you, you will run out of money before I do. You want to dance? Let's dance. Someone knocking on the door. Boy, and I mean, I didn't blink. They go, well, do you know this, 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 this is a $40 million budget thing? You see me blink? Come on, son, get your lawyers. Do what you got to do. Now, I know it sounds cocky and arrogant, but I know what God can do. But I also know what I can do. Well, they dropped that real fast. I thought, hmm. And Armstrong International, you will never get this. Oh, yes, I will. You know what my reputation is at Armstrong International Airport? They say this, it's like an Old Testament scripture. His God is good to him. Yeah. Yeah. We tell him he can't do this. And my God, the FAA comes in and says he can. I'm the only one in 40 something years that has wholesale fuel at Armstrong International Airport. I, listen to me, man. You got Shell Oil Company. That's a multi-billion dollar company. You said all these major losers in the land and exploration. You're talking multi-billion dollar. They got to buy it at Signature. They got to buy it at Atlantic. But me, they said that'll never happen. And it did. I have my own fuel farm. I have the whole ball of wax. And to make a long story, they come out there and they look and they said, how 
tired of this blankety blank preacher. I said, whoa, 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 stop. You're on holy ground. Change it. Don't, you don't say those words. This is holy ground. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, they know about my reputation. I'll do this. I said, you ain't, you're not cussing no more. I learned that from Napoleon. That's all. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Mm. Write this down. Belief in the answer to prayer means you have become accustomed to dwelling at the source of all comfort. Belief in the answer to prayer means you have become accustomed to dwelling at the source of all comfort. I've grown used to dwelling, to staying at the source of all comfort. How many times the Lord has said, Jesse, you need anything? No. I said, you supplied it. He said, before you ask, I, uh, your answer is, do you want anything? I said, not right now, Lord, but as soon as I find out, I'll let you know. I said, do you want anything? He said, no, I just want more fellowship with you. I said, well, let's talk. I said, you want to get in the truck? Yeah. So I just get in my truck and go, me and the Lord. And he watches over me. Sometimes I'm going a little too fast. And the Lord said, there's a cop around the corner, slow down. And I slowed down and me and God just passed the cop. <laughs> you can say what you want. I don't believe it. I don't care. And let me tell you something about that, Jerry Seville. That boy is crazy when it comes to speed. That's why I scream like a girl. <laughs> and so is Keith Moore. Them boy loves speed. Now, if I introduced him to the speed I know, Keith, Keith's voice would go, will I tell you what? <laughs> no, I That's the stuff I know. But that, that, that little GTO, that, Jerry said, let's go riding this thing, man. I could see it in his eyes. It glazed over. <laughs> now, I remember 1966, 67, I had a friend that had a GTO. He won more money. He took a pack of cigarettes and he put it on the dashboard. He said, when I take off, if you can grab that pack of cigarettes, I'll give you $100. Everybody said, man, we're going to take that bet. He never lost. But he said he took a little water, uh, took a little air out the top, put some water in his tire as well. As that. And you're like, Argh! well, I thought Jerry had taken the air out of his tire and put some water in it. That's Jerry. Argh! Just going like a, and I'm going. Argh! You don't double dog Jerry Savelle at all. He'll jump off a bridge. There's something wrong with these Texas people, I'm telling you. <laughs> and I ride with them more. Oh, I have the most fun, because what I love more than anything, I love that he loves it. He enjoys it so much. Well, you know what it is? We're back, we back young. They forgot. Put the picture back up. I wanted to see the picture. <laughs> you see? Yeah. That is not a Speedo, but it's close. Okay, you cut it off. So when you understand, and I just enjoy Jerry. I mean, he, he, he loves it, and it's just such a blessing. And I've had to tell Carolyn, his wife, she says, can you believe this? I said, Carolyn, do you know how much money's sitting in this garage? I said, if Jerry decided to sell some of this stuff, there'd be a line down the street, man, a good 300 yards just to look at these cars. People want to buy these because they're in perfect working condition. Trucks, cars, motorcycles, everything you can think of. But that's his pleasure. Well, my pleasure is artwork. You know, and and that, that's what I do. I started, uh, and oh, God, man. I hear the voice of God when I buy a painting. I hear the voice of God when I buy a piece of uh, furniture. I go with God, man, I, when I go, I go, I, and you know, cause I, I, I've made a lot of royalties. You know, I, I got several lines of income and things. I don't mean that privately. And they said they do a spreadsheet on me and all that kind of craziness. But I mean, um, uh, I started buying porcelain and uh, paintings and French furniture and all kinds of, I mean, and we would go to the uh, International Believers Convention. Kathy, would, uh, Gloria would tell Kathy, listen, 
we're going to watch, go see a cat. Bring Jesse with us because he likes stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I love architecture, you know, and I'm just looking around. So while they were doing it, I'd have one day off. I would buy sterling silver because that's the best. You know, in terms of, you're talking English, it's, it's sterling silver. I mean, it's just fine stuff. I mean, the, the artwork and the different things. And I got stuff that was, they made in 1700. I mean, just one little picture cost your arm and the leg. I wanted to buy, you ain't going to believe this, Paul Revere, a picture about this big. They wanted $1.5 million for it because it was stamped Paul Revere. Because everybody back then believed in silversmiths, that whatever a silversmith said, that's what they believed. That's why he said the British are coming. Yeah. He didn't know that, did you? Yeah. So I would do those things. So I started buying stuff. And I began, and I bought some beautiful pieces. I got pieces that were in Versailles. In fact, Rick Renner, I love, he took me to uh, uh, Catherine the Great's castle. And man, I'm walking in there in St. Petersburg. And, and Rick said, good God, Jesse, you know a lot about this stuff. Yeah, and I, I called the courier, curator over and I said, listen, uh, I want to buy it. Oh, we never sell. I said, don't, you never, that's a curator. I said, take this card and listen to me. When this thing comes up one day, because see, you may not always be here. I said, give me first dibs on this thing. Well, I mean, and, and, and I love furniture and I found that the most powerful furniture is people, four men, Francois Link. <laughs> they sign it like you do a, a painting. Uh, Paul da, uh, Dasson, Swiner, Paul Somani. I got that in my house. Now you got that stuff. That stuff don't go down. That stuff goes up. They sign it. Well, I called Kathy and she said, Jesse. I said, Kathy, uh, listen, there's this China cabinet done by Francois Link. I said, Kathy, he made furniture for the king of Egypt. I said, listen to me. I said, we need to buy this. Well, how much is it? I said, it's $1.2 million. She goes, oh, Jesse, that is a lot of money. I said, I know it's a lot of money. I said, but Kathy, I'm telling you, I, this is God. Oh, it ain't God. It's just you liking it. <laughs> Someone knocking on the door. Somebody ringing. I said, I'm telling you. And I had the $1.2 million. I just got a check in from all these royalties. Yeah. I'm sitting there looking at it. I'm going to put it in a CD that can give me 3%. Come on. And uh, I said, Kathy, I just feel, I'm telling you, but I'm not going to spend that kind of money without me and Kathy agreeing. And she said, well, Jess, I don't feel right about it. I said, you don't go by what you feel. You go by what you believe. <laughs> now listen to me. We need, <laughs> we need to do this. Listen, I'm telling you, I feel good. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, she said, if you want to buy it, buy it. I said, no, no, no don't say it like that. <laughs> I'm knocking on your door, mama. Someone knocking on the door. I said, I'm telling you, this is a great investment. Well, I just don't feel right about it. I said, okay, 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 okay. I went before the Lord and I said, she won't listen. <laughs> he says, so what are you going to do? I said, well, I'm not going to do it because she won't, because you know, you put us together as one. So I called a guy and they needed that money that afternoon, Steve. He wanted to wire it, see? He said, man, if I had the money, I'd buy it. I said, well, my wife, she don't feel right about it. Okay, boom. I mean, I got off the phone, seven minutes later, it sold. Guy paid 1.2 million. <laughs> to the moon, Alice, to the moon. <laughs> seven years later. Sotheby's, Christie's in New York. I look at it and they're auctioning off the Francois Link China cabinet. I go, oh my God. Now remember, the man paid 1.2 million. How much do you think it went for? Just, just take a guess. Five. Five million? Go up. Seven. Seven. Go up. Ten. Go up. Twelve. Go up. Twenty. I said, Kathy, Nicked. if murder wasn't a sin, I'd kid you to death. <laughs> <laughs> I was so mad at Kathy. I did it $20 million, woman, in seven years. You know what she says? You wouldn't have sold it. Exactly. <laughs> I said, no, I wouldn't have sold it. I <laughs> I said, but Kathy, think about Jody or think about Meredith. You know, they might get a hundred million dollars because Meredith's only 15 years old. Sell it at 60. Who know what? 
someone knocking on the door. <laughs> so I think about that very often. <laughs> and I go, Jesus. Now I understand why you was never married. I, I understand. <laughs> I do everything to try to twist God's arm, do everything I can. That's a pretty good investment, isn't it? Yes. But Kathy's right. I would not have sold it. I just look at it. I love the quality. Nancy got to come to my house. And this is Nancy with her phone. I said, you, don't put it on, on, on the internet because security. She, she said, brother, you got a beautiful house, but the artwork. Yeah. Yeah. I got a painting called The White Lady. Not because she's white. It's just called The White Lady. You know what I mean? <laughs> Costs a lot. Is that what you call it? The Lady in White. The Lady in White. What's the difference? <laughs> What's the di- what, the, what the difference? <laughs> See, she's 3D and I'm 4D. Beautiful, cost me. It, that, that, that would buy your house, maybe more. And every time I walk, she, her eyes follow you. Boy, this guy's good. God, Raphael's. I got a, a picture. I made a painting of Jesus and Joseph and Mary and old Elizabeth, and that's John the Baptist and Jesus, and the artist made him buff. It was Raphael's first student. It's worth a fortune. I said, look at this thing. You wouldn't sell it. Well, if I was hungry, I would. <laughs> and the Lord said, you like those things, don't you? I said, oh God, I don't know where I got this. I was raised so poor. Jerry, Jezebel was right. I was raised poor. And I wasn't ashamed of that mom and dad did the best they could. But when you understand that Peter had a harder time getting in the church than he did getting out of jail. I had a harder time trying to sell Kathy on that piece. (laughs) I wanted it in the collection. I got a collection on him. That's, his, I don't mean that privately, but that, that's just what you like. Creflo Dollar told me one time, he said, my God, Jesse, you can sell a vase and live for a year. <laughs> I had vase, I mean, I, it's some beautiful, I mean, it's just, you know, if you like that kind of decor, I don't, I don't know, you know, those kind of things. And thank God for the book sales, the 12 best-selling books, a lot of money, you know, and I just invested all those different things and, and, and things of that nature, you know. Now, when it comes out of kind of stuff, Kathy will, um, She'll agree with me, and I'm gonna close with this. She'll agree, she'll agree. Now, when it comes to jewelry, it's totally different. She says, Jesse, come here. This ring is talking to me. I said, well, I don't hear a word it's saying. Which gave me a point. If the divine voice is silent, it's because there's no obedient ears to receive it. If the divine voice is it's because there's no obedient ears. I said, well, what's it saying? It's saying, buy it. You want to look at it? I said, no. Then she comes up with this. Do you want me to have it? I said, that's what I live for. Sure. I said, but don't you ever forget Francois Link and a China captain. <laughs> She said, you're never going to let me live that down. No. <laughs> but most of the stuff, Kathy, she's picked a lot of the things. We just do it. She said, the, the difference between you and me is you, you don't have limits, and I do. I said, no, you know, we're the same. We, you you got to agree. I said, yeah. You know, and Kathy is a phenomenal decorator, just like Carolyn Savelle is. But every once in a while, they miss it. And she don't like me to tell her you missed it. I said, you missed it on this. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you think you can do any better? Yeah. I said, so I called this lady in. I said, I want you to go to France. I don't care what it costs. I want you to find this certain fabric for me. I want them to make it. I want to be the only person in the United States that has it, not trying to show off. This is what I want. Money is of no consequence. Do it. 
Then Kathy, you know how much that's going to cost? Yeah. Yeah. I said, Bertha, get it. Well, you can sell these wonderful drapes. This is in our bedroom, that turquoise. Okay. I mean, I have, I have a bed that King Louis XVIII slept in. I have a Napoleon Bonaparte's fire screen and andirons. The real Napoleon. It's all signed stuff. Make a long story short. What's it? She said, okay. She said, we could sell them. Well, Kathy couldn't sell the drapes. This is the one that we had in there. These are big drapes. Now, I didn't know that. I was waiting for them to do all that. Finally, they come in and they said, well, we're just going to have to store these or give them away. We can't sell it. I said, I can sell it. You want me to sell it? <laughs> I said, do you want me to sell this? She said, yeah. I said, I'll sell it to Jews. <laughs> Jews don't pay retail on nothing. That's Gentile stuff. <laughs> 10 minutes. I sold the whole thing. Kathy goes, well, someone knocking on the door, somebody ringing the bell. And not too long ago, uh, the pre person I saw, he said, I want you to come to my mother's apartment in the French Quarter. I want you to see the drapes that you had. And it looked perfect for them. And I got what I want. He got what he wants. Don't tell me I can't do that. No. God will take me so far. And then the angel of the party he says, now, walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, so I complete my destiny and reach my destination. I close with this. Faith keepers either have a very good conscience or a very dead one to be able to sleep in perilous times. But I want to tell you something about Peter. Most people be up all night. They're going to kill you. Not him. The angel got to kick the boy to get him up. <laughs> but he had made up his mind. Now he's confused. Where are you going? I did my job. Now you go the rest of the way. And that's exactly what Peter did to the end of his life. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I do. So I tell young people in Bible schools, I said, it's wonderful. It's great. I said, but you know, you're going to have to do something yourself. I said, God's going to open these doors that no man can shut and close a door that no man can open. But I said, I'm going to tell you something. He's not going all the way with you. Now you go do your part. So, I mean, and I've taught that to my daughter, Jody, and I've taught that to my uh, grand, only have uh, one daughter, one granddaughter. And they, she, especially Meredith, she's starting to notice money. <laughs> So she, she calls me grandfather, calls the other side grandpa. Grandfather, been since a little bitty baby. I've been walking in the mall, grandfather. People just look at me, I go, yes. <laughs> she says, how much money you got? And where is it? I want to see it. <laughs> I said, well, Meredith, why do you want to do that? Well, you said everything you got belongs to mama and, and me. I said, that's true. Everything we got, me and Mimi, everything we got belongs to your mama and you. And she said, well, what do you do? I said, well, Meredith, there's two ways you work with money. Number one, you can work for money. And if you got a job you like, never quit it. Because very few people that are working today love the job they have. But if you've got one that you totally like, I don't care if it's not a lot of money, do it. Make, it will make money if you really put passion in it. I said, so you, you can work for money or you can work money. Which means while you're sleeping, your money's working. She said, well, what do you do? I said, I do both. I work for money and I work money. Why? Not that I can buy something for his kingdom. I, I, it's a selfish reason. I want to get out of here. I want to do another believers convention in heaven. I, I would like to do that. My last statement. I'll argue with Kenneth Copeland. You don't argue with Kenneth Copeland, but I did. My first believers convention. He tells me, give an altar call. Now, I'm trying to explain something to this prophet. I said, excuse me, Brother Copeland. This is a believer's convention. He said, yeah, I know. Give an altar call. <laughs> Brother Copeland, listen to me. This is a believer's convention. He said, I done told you that. I know it. I said, but there ain't nobody going to come. This is a believer's convention. He said, shut up, Jesse, and give the altar call. I said, okay, 603 people came forward 33 years ago. He looked at me and he goes. So I asked some of them after they went back and got there. I said, why did you come here? Well, we want to figure out how you guys do this. 
So we sit back there, these guys, they can bring in money like you ever say. So let's learn that, you know, we'll put it in the secular world. But something happened to us. So Brother Copeland was right, I was wrong. What he was telling me was, somebody knocking on the door, ringing the bell. See, now you're gonna sing that song all night. <laughs> it's gonna be in your mind. You're gonna be going to lunch. Someone knocking on the door. And it wouldn't have happened if Peter wouldn't have continued knocking. So what are you believing for? Knock and it shall be open to you. Just keep knocking and watch God do a miracle with no trace on it. None whatsoever. And if I can have it, you can have it. Because God's no respect to person. I remember when Ray Jean came to my house. Ray Jean, it was at night. Ray Jean and Beth. Jesus. And Ray Jean went all the way back to the fence. I have a wrought iron fence there. Oh my God, Jess. I said, you like it? Oh yeah. I'm not trying to show off. That's what the Lord told me to do. Yeah. And I want to thank all the people of color. You heard when Brother Copeland said, everybody is a per person of color. Stand up. Kathy stood up. <laughs> I want to say, what do you know that I don't know? <laughs> What you know? What? She said, well, I'm white. Uh, I said, someone knocking on the door. <laughs> I can honestly say this to you wonderful black people. I haven't had one black person criticized at home. I may be on the balcony out there or on the front. Hey, brother, build it bigger. How does it feel to live in something like that? It feel good. I feel good. Da -na 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 -na. Oh, I just enjoy it. Here come the white people. Hang on, hang on. To a spit. I want to spit on the house. I can't believe it. That's a true story. Boy, if I see a black person coming down the road, I run out in the front yard. Build it bigger. They say they want their ministers blessed. Yeah. White people want them starving. <laughs> I'm going to take a blood transfusion of black men's blood. I said, Dear Lord, just change the color. Do whatever you got to do, man. Because when I go to those black churches, I love the way they dance. They can stay in one place and do 47 footsteps. <laughs> just go. <laughs> Not Bill Winston. He's too slow. Yeah, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. Where my people? Where my people? Where my people? <laughs> Boy, but he got revelation, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, Lord, he got revelation. Just such a blessing. <laughs> Bishop Jakes, I'll tell you one more story. I shouldn't tell you. Bishop Jakes, I went preaching at his church. I've been knowing Jakes for a long time. Thomas Dexter Jakes, that's his real name. Call him Bishop, you know. Great man. I really like him and his wife. <laughs> so he asked me to come he did, in Dallas. This is many years ago. He said, now listen, after you finish preaching, we'll go, go come to my office. We've got some finger foods and we'll talk a little bit. Wound up talking to three o'clock in the morning. Had the most wonderful time. I said, well, Bishop, the boy, let's face it. He's a preaching machine. He can flat shuck the corn. I mean, he can preach, boy. I said, I said, well, did you like the sermon? He said, I, I didn't hear any of it. I said, you didn't hear any of it. He said, nah. I said, you were sitting right on the platform. He said, yeah, I didn't hear any of it. I said, was you, something wrong with your hearing or something? He said, no, I was wanting to look at that watch that was on your arm. <laughs> I said, what? He said, I said, oh Lord, let him pull his arm back. I have this phenomenal watch. I had it specially made. I have the uh, patent on it and everything. It's a lot of money. It's encrusted. I said, you want to see it, Bishop? And I did this and he went, Oh my. I thought he was going to do 47 steps right there. Well, come on, Jesus. This is years ago. I mean, just years and years ago. And his little boy then was Thomas Dexter Jake Jr. Was he seven or six? Now he's a full grown man. But I mean, he looked at me and said, Boy, Jesse, can I hug you? I said, Yes, you can. Let her. They call him Dexter. He hugged me. He said, I love you. I fall asleep when my daddy preaches. I look at Bishop, he said, 
Dexter always tells the truth. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Stand to your feet. What time is it? Still dark. Would you pray with me in the Holy Ghost for just a minute? Would you just pray with me in the Holy Ghost? Yeah, Lord. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, if somebody can remove this pulpit and stuff. Come on, keep praying. Thank you, Lord. God's answering prayers right now. He's answering prayers for everyone that'll believe. Some of you are in impossible situations. Yeah, you are. And the time of the chains are going to come off and you're going to have to walk the rest of the way, which it'll be okay. I, I, I talked to the Lord this afternoon and I said, Lord, I, people criticize me because of the possessions you have given me and to your glory. And I used to tell him all the time, I said, you know, this anointing of increase that's on my life, if, if it don't come on someone else, it's heresy. Because it would make you a respective person. That, that can't be. He's got to go to all people that believe. And the Lord said, I want you to do something tonight. I said, oh, geez, you want me to do that? I said, I'll give an offer. I'll walk down. I, I can flow in the Holy Ghost. Son. I don't mean that private. <laughs> and don't tell me, you're missing. You're going to get mad at it. I don't miss when I'm listening to the voice of God. I'm not moved by people's emotions and feelings. I just do what the Lord tells me to do. Now, if you're trying to get out there, trying to do something so somebody can recognize who you are, you're going to miss God a hundred miles. But if you want the anointing of increase, with immediate results. I mean, sp spiritual, physical, financial, whether it be spiritual, it could be, it could be financial, just fine. Increase, increase in your spirit. Where you flow more in the Holy Ghost you ever flowed. Where you have more health than you've ever had. Where you have more finance than you ever had. Oh, my shock how am I gonna do this, Lord? Get out of your seat and come up here. Just come up here. I don't care how many people, I don't care if we jam pack this thing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just come. And if you can't, fill it in completely. And if you can't, uh, get in the lines down there. Now listen to me. This is going to work. I have no financial trouble. None. Zero. Come on. Pack in here as much as you can. You know what the Lord's going to do? He's going to mix anointings. See, you're going to get anointing from people behind you, around you, side you. My anointing will be flowing to you. God's anointing. Come on. Now, you know, I'm seeing the amount of people that are coming. What? All of us should have already had it. Jesus had no financial trouble. Yet Ephesians 5 verse 1 said, Be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. Now, you know, Brother Jerry's preaching on maximum results. Well, you better get ready now. Amen. I want you to start believing. This is what the Lord told me. You that are in the aisles, and up in the, up, up, I mean, everywhere. I want you to start believing that before you do your project, your finances are already there. Amen. I think the days of raising money is over with. Amen. If we can call it in, get it, then as God gives us the projects, and it's nothing wrong with raising money. I have no problem with that. Don't misunderstand me. But I mean, you just go do it. Yeah. You just, you just, so, just, just go do it. Yeah. And then what's next, Lord? Next, next, until you complete your destiny and reach your destination. Yes, now, I want you to place your hand on someone around you. And I want you to begin praying in the Holy Ghost. You don't know how to do that. Pray in English. And God's going to mix these anointings. Lord, Everyone in the front, all the one down the aisles, all the people that are up still in the back and they can't get it, all the people that are walking forward. Father, not 30, not 60, but 100-fold God. Not 100 times. That's mathematics, Lord. 
We're not dealing with man's way of thinking. We're dealing with your way of thinking. Father, I decree from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, that hundredfold. Lord, it's on me. I want it to come upon them that whatever they want, whatever they desire, what, you don't have to worry about the need. You'll meet that. God, I want homes paid off. I want new homes built. I want all the things that everybody said they could not have. I want them to have it. You have given that to me, Jesus. You have done that for me. Now, Lord, I ask you to take this anointing that you so graciously gave me, gave Brother Copeland, gave Brother Keith, gave, uh, you know, Brother Jerry, brother, uh, all the ministers here, Brother Jeremy, all of them. Lord, I ask you to release it now. Put angels on assignment all night long, breaking down barricades everything, God, that tries to stop and hinder because you are knocking on the door, you're ringing the bell, and all we want to do is complete the destiny and reach the destination. Father, I thank you for churches paid off. I thank you for new churches being built without the help of a bank. God, I ask you, let them become the biggest depositors in the towns and in the cities where they live, in the country where they live. Those that are watching online, faith destroys all distance between me and them, Lord. Fill the airways, fill the satellites with the anointing of increase, God. Lord, because when you needed to feed 5,000 people, they got fed. Lord, and over and above, and the fragments were picked up. Lord, you never struggled. And Lord, I understand that because your word is true. God, that, that angel, I ask you to send now and knock down barricades, knock and knock off chains of debt, dishonesty, all that junk. And God let people walk out and let the angel depart and they go to the place they're supposed to be. Father, I don't want anybody to be surprised, but I expect immediate results. This is Wednesday night. This is Wednesday night. And I ask you, God, to start tonight as people sleep, the rustling of the angel's wings, the things that belong to us, and God, when you plant, when you created this world, there were no sinners. Everything created on this planet was for us, your family. Lord, I decree, mix those anointings now. Lord, I'm not sick. Why should people be sick? I ask you and thank you today, Father, that your word is real. From the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, let them see checks in the mail. People bl blessing them beyond their wildest dreams. Not walking saying, would you give me something? but just letting that anointing go that before they ask, you answer. God, I thank you for it. I believe you for it. Now this crowd knows how to pray. This crowd knows how to believe. Lord, I feel the anointing. Ola Baba Shaka, leaving my body now. Lord, let it go across like a tsunami, a tsunami. People need television cameras. They need to do all the things they need to do, whatever it may be. They may need planes, I don't know. Whatever they need, it doesn't make any difference, God. They've sowed seed. Now let harvest come. Let us be known as the people called the harvesters, that we've harvested all. Father, I thank you. Now there are healing anointings in here, salvation anointings in here, prophetic anointings in here, financial anointings. Now Lord, mix it all up. One nation, Israel, 12 different tribes, Lord, but they're still a nation. When they stay together as a 12, they become one. Father, I thank you for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, because they mixed the anointings and they became one. Father, I decree and declare today, lift your hands up and thank God for your miracle right now. Woo! Come on, give him a great shout. The Lord's going to give, and we've heard the Lord say this many times, insights, concepts, and ideas. The richest thing in the world is an idea. Steve Jobs had an idea. An apple was born. An idea. Your mind's going to be consumed with ideas. If you don't act on them, the angel will bring to them, and then he'll depart then you create that idea because it's given to you. 
Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, by next year, many of you will have no more financial trouble. <laughs> Some of you are going to have a hard time getting sick unless you want to. And I know you don't want to. The devil tried to shut me down tonight from coming because of this toe. I mean, you know, that. I said, does it hurt? What's your, you think I care? You see me blink? I'm not denying this. I don't live in denial. I deny it's right. Why? Because I got other services to do. I got to go all the way to Friday plus. Then I got to be in two states on Sunday. <sighs> Mark my words. Hold us so kindly. The lady that wants the flower shop, she's going to have your flower shop. And all the inventory that you need to make beautiful things. And I will cause favor to come to you. And on your first day, you will break records. Come and show He used to say, and they will come and say, I don't know why I've never used this flower shop before. I just felt I had to come here. Some of you have been waiting a long time for a new house. Not that you don't like your house. You just like to have something new. Well, get ready. It don't make no difference how big it is, how expensive it is. He's not asking you to pay for it. All the way back there, guys, he's asking you to believe for it. I'm telling you. Thank you, Lord. He said, tell him, I'm going to be very busy tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Ministries will increase. Some of you that made five million are going to make 20 million. Some of you that made 20 million are going to make 80 million. Some of you that make 80 million are going to make 150 million and on and on. The numbers mean nothing to God. Now you don't just sit and look at it. You never become lazy with seed. Seed was designed to grow. I heard Brother Copeland say, that's why fence posts rot in the ground. Because the ground is trying to make it grow, breaking it down so that it could produce something. But they put creosote on it, which killed every piece of life in there. Kind of like the, that cancer stuff. What do they call that? Uh, chemo. They can't, they got to kill the good with the bad, not God. He'll just take out the bad and leave the good and make the good stronger than it was before. You better get ready to grow. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You'll be in grocery stores. You'll be at Walmarts. And people will say, well, there's something about you. What is it? And you'll tell them, it's the Christ in me. Amen. Are you having trouble? Yeah. Well, let me pray for God to increase you. I do that all the time. It's just truly amazing. And just last week, or a couple of weeks ago, we had a visionary conference. Four churches now got all their buildings. Couldn't get it to save their life. God knows how to knock down barricades. Let me just look at all the new people that are blessed. Thank you. Oh, now I want to tell you something. You're going to be doing this. See, I never preach with my hands out. I preach with my hands up. That's where the covenant is. And money going to drip down like oil. Yeah, Lord. And you'll be able to give offerings like David did for the temple. Boy, and go figure out what that man gave for the temple. That's impossible. That's why he works. Peter can't get out of jail. That's why the angel came. Now, all you got to do is get to the house and keep knocking on the door. If you can't believe that word, remember Paul McCartney. Someone knocking on the door. Somebody ringing the bell. And the Lord told me this today. He said, if they'll believe what you said, there's nothing they can't do. Nothing. Andre, if you don't mind me saying this, I went and preached for this wonderful man there in East London, South Africa. Had a wonderful time with him and his wonderful wife. It was a blessing. He received an offering from me. Do you mind if I say that, Andre? Okay. On the last night I preached, very simple. But I knew the anointing increases on me. 
And it is the poorest providence in South Africa, right? A section where we, and he's got 11,000 seat built. You know, it's called the Faith Dome. It's phenomenal. Brother Copeland's been there, and I think uh, several, several ministers have been there. But he also lives in America as well as that. And he called me up and it was that thing. He said, Brother Jesse, you received the biggest offering I've ever given any guest speaker. In their money, it was a million rand. That, that's their money. Yes. Forget about the Euro and the American dollar. People live where they live and they use the money that they use. It was just such a blessing of the Lord. And I said, God, why? He said, I want to bless those people. I want that providence to become the richest one, not just Joburg or Cape Town or, or, or Dur, whatever that other. Bur yeah, you know. Well, just like our brother said, when you have jurisdiction, you change all that. You have been given juris jurisdiction today, spiritually, physically, and financially. Mark my words, it's going to happen. And I want it to happen before the end of this convention. Not for me, so that you can tell other people, you know what happened when I was standing by you? As a man here been wanting a truck all your life, you're going to get a new, brand new truck given to you. And listen, before you say it, it's going to be the color you like and exactly the speed you want. That's coming to pass. There's no other choice in the matter. So you want to get involved in some of the things like God has had me get involved? Well, ask for business sense as well as anointings and mix them. And you know what? Some of the smartest people in the world are listening to what you have to say. My dad told me before he died, my son Jesse can sell a Jewish man a cross. I said, thanks dad for believing in me. I appreciate that. And you know, I'm the only the planets left. All of them passed away. My brother, my last brother passed away in March, in March of this year. I never thought I would outlive everybody. Grandparents, parents, brothers, sisters. Now I have cousins and stuff like that, but in my family. And I thought, huh. So how does it feel, but Jesse? Empty. I mean, I'm not, I'm not grieving, just empty. I often wondered who would be the last. I've outlived them all. I've lived longer than any of my brothers and sisters. And I asked the Lord why. He says, because you've got a job to do. I said, fine, Lord. Oh, and I do like fried chicken, but I don't eat it every day. <laughs> I might take a piece once in a while or something like that, you know. I eat actually pretty healthy, you know, but I mean, every once in a while, you got to have a little grease. Helps you swallow better, you know. <laughs> Jerry and Carolyn took me to eat Papa Cetus today for lunch. I wanted to drink that salsa. And, and it, they, we just had a wonderful time. Are you ready for your wallet to open up? For your mouth to open up and the anointing flow out of it? For you be so healthy that the doctors say, you know, you, you don't even really need to come here. How many of you want that? You got that. Lift your hands up one more time. Father, I thank you today. First, I ask you to give everybody a great night's rest. Bless them. Put angels on assignment, walk in the halls of the hotels or wherever they are. All those that are out there watching, that you touch them wherever they are. I want, I want results, God, and I know you are a result, God, because they heard me when I said the angel departed. Now it was Peter's job to get to the house. Now it's going to be their job to make this come to pass. You've already created it. All they got to do is walk it out. And let me tell you, this is a prophetic utterance. It will not be hard. It will not take a long time. None of that stuff, unless you just want it to take a long time, which I don't believe you do. We are Americans. We created fast food. We get mad if Wendy's spend 30 seconds more fixing a hamburger. You know it and I know it. It'll come to pass quickly. Mark my words. Hallelujah. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them you love them. Your anointings have been mixed. 
the anointing of increase is upon you. People are saved, healed, and touched, and blessed. Somebody shout somebody. Come on, brother.